So welcome to this week's edition of Cricket Chat. Uh, we are going to review the second week of the NPCA League that was played on 18th of this month. Uh, no surprises, Pamba, were there? There wasn't. Um, in fact, when I called uh, one of the matches, that is uh, Jim Khan against Ali, I called it Jim Khan. I hope mm -hmm. Arfield wasn't aware at that point in time that he wouldn't, Jim Gana wouldn't have car and call in them. Uh, they were missing also a young boy who came into the team and uh, on the first day did a better. Yash Talati from, uh, yeah. from, from the academy side, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. He did well. So he was missing this last weekend and so was, uh, so was uh, car and call. And then we had uh, sadly bringing the pro, which may be out a bit, but besides that, uh, Jim Kana also were guilty of a few chances, uh, mm -hmm. not taking a few chances. So um, it ended up being a tight game. That was the only yeah. one that I thought uh, probably didn't go as, as I expected. Other than that, mm -hmm. the rest uh, played out the way we I expected them. I'm sure you <laughs> called Ruaraka over Sobi Baba, but I thought... Yes. Um, I thought so Mbappé should have enough uh, over Waraka, despite the Waraka being having uh, the three guys from Uganda, professionals from Uganda. I thought uh, uh, Jim uh, would be a better balanced team because if you take out the three pros from Uganda, uh, mm -hmm. whatever you are left with uh, is really not a balanced side. They lack in each department, despite the fact that they have... Um, Maybe one youngster, Ashit Vakaria, who turned out for the under 19 two years back, uh, should be good value for money, but uh, is currently not in form. So that might have contributed uh, hugely uh, in their loss. Because at certain yeah. stages in that match, they were 77 for three, they went about 94 for three, and then from then on, they went 114 all out. So they lost quite a few wickets at the back. Um, which, uh, the, the, which would probably say they have a long tail uh, in their side. So there are quite a few things that I think uh, they'll need to address going forward. And besides that, I also think um, when you look at, when, when I spoke about the three professions they got, the Kenneth Waisua, uh, Brian Masaba, and, uh, and, and Kenneth Waisua, Brian Masaba, and the other, and uh, so, Arina Itwe, uh, Itwe. If, you, yeah. if you address those three, because I was thinking, I'm probably slightly happy with Zephania Arina Itwe, but besides the fact that it, it tends to profit a lot from either short balls or uh, on the off, which you cut, and maybe short yeah. balls on the body or towards the leg, which you probably pull them for fours. But besides mm -hmm. that, I think they, they try to work him out in terms of yeah. probably getting to play forward more. Mm -hmm. And that's where they, they, they got through the gate. Coach did the trick for them, for, for, mm -hmm. uh, for Mbappa. So, yeah. thought, so Mbappa, not overall, but individuals. They had <laughs> a few individuals who would help them get over the line. Uh, Rushab stood out there with a 56, um, which was key. I think uh, in stabilizing the top of the inning, and then later on, they might even go 59, uh, mm -hmm. which, which was good enough. So I thought they used um, individual skill more than the team uh, set up to be able to, to, to win that game. Okay. Uh, back to Jim Kana. Do you think they're setting themselves up for failure? Because uh, this week they were missing also Anav, who picked four wickets in the first match. Uh, when you uh, who who re Hash replaced him, he was supposed to bowl for them leg spin, but he bowled the one over in bowl ten, right? So they cut him off. Uh, the five wickets were shared by the Anderson brothers. Dominic has been a constant. He managed a, a half century this week. What did he score last week? Was it another half century or forties? Yes, something he did like get that. He just did get another half century. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just so, a, a pick here, a pick there. Are Jim Kana setting themselves up for failure? 
Um, I don't know. I don't really. It's it's probably what it is at the minute. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say they're setting themselves up for failure. It's probably um, a lack of investment on one part, and the other part is uh, is an availability of players. I'm told. <laughs> I'm informed that um, uh, Yashtalat, Yana, Patel were all away. Uh, schools have yeah. closed. We could have been on trip with parents. Yeah. Uh, and also, current call for personal reasons wasn't avail available. Uh, they still fought um, hard. It wasn't an easy game. It, they didn't add it to Sali on a silver platter. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think they're setting themselves up for failure. I think it's just a matter of a lack of investment on one side and probably an availability of some key players uh, during those matches. But uh, they'll, they'll, they'll fight this to the nail. They'll try and get somewhere. They, they might not be title contenders, but obviously they, they'll be trying to get themselves in the middle of the park. Um, are, they, are they fully utilizing what they have? Because um, if you look at where Lucas is batting, where Karan is batting, where Martin is batting, could they benefit from shifting their batting order around a little bit? I think that could help. Um, I looked at Lucas' position, I think it was a seven, and I think it is lower down. You may need uh, a few or more of us than, than he, he managed uh, this weekend, but still he had opportunity to to get something big, but um, okay. told he was actually out on a stunner uh, of a catch. Um, it was one where either you got out of the way, or you stood yeah. there and took it. He just got mm. to a pool far too quickly. And it yeah. took um, okay, a marvelous catch at the end of the day, but also one that probably you couldn't run away from. It, it had to hit you or you take it. Yeah. And uh, so it's one of those, sometimes you say you ride your luck, and if you're brave, you come out on top at times. Um, I think Sally did that as well. And I think from the failure they had previously on the other week against mm -hmm. Kakileva, they thought that yeah. they could revamp their side by adding somebody else to, to help them uh, over the line. And uh, that's exactly what happened at Jim Kana. Besides mm -hmm. that, I actually thought Jim Kana could have actually probably bowled fast on that wicket. I spoke about them trying to exploit the conditions um on the surface at Jimkana in the morning um and the the weather the way it was looking or it was probably favoring seamers and uh i would have expected them to have probably ball fast and try and nick in a quick quick as put sally under pressure and and, and try and win the game from when, when chasing but as a mm -hmm. team i thought they made a decision that they were going to bat fast and probably uh, try and defend that total, uh, but they didn't get enough at the end of the day. So maybe something they can look back at um, as a team, discuss and see how they could uh, probably improve from here. It's two losses on two games, and both of them have been at home. Uh, soon they should be traveling away, and if they do that, they probably yeah. get in conditions that they are a bit unfamiliar with or ones that the opposition could exploit better. So it's all to play for, and. Um, it's a, it's a moment that they need to, to rise to the occasion very soon, otherwise they'll find themselves um, at the bottom of this table. They are at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so Sir Ali won by three wickets. They benefited from Zahid Abbas's half century. Uh, a, a glimpse of hope from Tony, he made a 32. Is there an upward projection for Sir Ali or was it just a one-off for them? I think, uh, I wouldn't say it's an upward <coughs> projection. Uh, they tried to arrest their surprise loss, but uh, I think <coughs> It's still too little in, in terms of uh, investment or in terms of the strength of the team. Uh, they've got just one pro, unless they are planning to bring a few others or one more or two more to be able to strengthen the side. Uh, they may be able to have got enough uh, to beat uh, not so full Jim Gunner side, but um, if, if they probably, on another day, they could have still even lost as much, even with the pro in. 
Uh, so for me, I don't think they're, they're setting themselves to go uh, a step further. But mm -hmm. knowing the, the style of recent days and uh, uh, the, the with Gurdjieff Singh's uh, dad and their investment, uh, they, they're usually keen to try and win. And um, uh, that guy would put in uh, something if it need, if need be to try and yeah. help the team uh, get a better position. So he probably will address, look at the situation, see if we can get uh, maybe somebody else. I think it's difficult to be able to probably get a local now um, because the transfer period has been closed. Uh, it probably would be a late transfer, which will cost something. So it's, it's probably difficult. The teams have sent in their names. And yeah. it's probably the only way you probably improve the team again is going over abroad and getting somebody. Mm -hmm. So, but, but they're still banking on their guys who are supposed to come in from India. If they come in early um, enough. Yes, if they come in early enough, yeah, they probably would be able to be a balanced side. But uh, they're still guilty of even the locals that they have who haven't fired yet. Um, looking at players like Eugene, he uh, should be able to get um, wickets up front. He should be able to get a few runs in him. He's got his... Yeah. Um, uh, the likes of Tony as well, well, he got a few this weekend, this past weekend, he could still better that. And also people like Zaidu coming into the game, if they get form, uh, Tarani mm. Singh, bowling for them, uh, yeah. they could help the team improve if um, so many of them come to the party. At the minute, yeah. it's been hit and miss, and uh, they're still probably finding their feet, the new players, and <laughs> gelling together. Of yeah. course, maybe they haven't had a lot of practice sessions under their belt. So when mm -hmm. they do that and probably gel together, we might see better than what we saw uh, last weekend or what was witnessed there at Gintana. Okay. Uh, in the other match of the day, Sri Lanka beat Gara by six wickets. I was surprised that Gara won the toss and the lecture to bat. Were you? I wasn't because on, on paper, Sri Lanka was stronger. Yeah. Um, Gara, as I mentioned again, um, for me, the, the trick that has worked a few times in the recent mm -hmm. past against strong opposition, really, and I've been there to sometimes uh, see those games. And yeah. what has happened is that they've tried, they've, if they got 180, they've got 200. It's difficult to chase 170 on that patch. Yeah. Um, and some of the spinners, Dei Patel, have uh, been bowling brilliantly on that surface. Brad Patel, who did well at Jim Canada the other week, also is one of those. They've got some, they've got three spinners that's about 30 of us in them. They could bowl so well on a day and deny an opposition. If, if at all there was an opposition that is not so good at playing spin, they would struggle a lot in terms of, of trying to put away those Ngara spinners. They do ball well at their surface. So if they got, I wasn't, I wouldn't be so surprised if they got 180, 200, they could probably give themselves a chance. Um, yeah. But this failure was just too strong for them, really, to be honest. Uh, so they got them 133. They could have even got them for lower. I'm told there were a few chances they also missed. Um, so they were really, really strong. Sri Lanka has invested a lot, uh, good local players. They've got international players as well, some uh, wicket keeper from Zimbabwe. Uh, and we were told, be, besides wicket keeping, I mean, from that, it could actually ball spin, it could ball off, it could ball leg spin as well. So he's multi talented. And the first bowler from Sri Lanka as well, I'm told, um, is, is good value for money. Yeah. Uh, Tanzil Sheikh, thoughts? He put on an all round uh, performance, 43 of 33 with the bats. He got a wicket. I think he could get more. He got one for 16 in six overs. Yes, um, you look at Tanzil Sheikh, and in the last few years, he's been the key bowler for Ngara. Whenever Ngara has won matches, or whenever Ngara has run teams close, especially the big teams. Um, it has been Tanzil's effort, by and large, contributing nearly 30 to 40% of those into those wins. 
um, the occasions where he could come up with uh, 65 runs and probably get three or four wickets in his turnovers. Um, he's really a key player, one that we've actually been thinking um, how he could have probably not, how has he not even gotten into the Kenyan team because he seems to offer something at the back end. Um, he can get uh, big scores and can also ball really well. And he's been the mainstay of Ngara um, as and when they need him, besides the fact that I've spoken highly of their spinners, they've also <laughs> got Sandilu up the order there, opens the bowling, and then comes lower to bat as a, as a bowling rounder. But in terms of getting runs, it does quite, it is very handy with the bat. And even if you look at that game, he got a 44. That was the highest score for Ongara. And um, at least that one got them somewhere, some sort of, it wasn't a score that you could say in a 50 over game that gave them respectability, but at least it wasn't embarrassing. Um, yeah. Because if you take that 44 out of that, that total, you're probably ending up below 100. And yeah, definitely. Below 100, it wouldn't really have be, be been a match that, uh, that, that, that was worth even speaking about. So, yeah. Um, his contribution is key. Uh, is someone that uh, uh, has has, it, has something in it, and I think going forward, if he if he keeps uh, performing the way he does, and the spinners, the other spinners also join him in terms of their performances. Um, Nicole also got fifty five the other weekend. If he could also chip in with the bat um, on a different on another day, they could probably run other as team like Stellan's close. Um, so uh, they are good value for money, but mm -hmm. maybe on, on the day was a little too strong. Maybe they are another position that could have probably been a match for them. Last week, Lamek was talking about uh, trying to instill a culture of clubs training that, like they used to when he was younger. And you find a team like Gara last week, it was a completely different set of players performing. This week, you'll find maybe one or two replicated. It's a completely different set of players performing. Would they benefit from the culture that Lamek was talking about? Will that make them a team to reckon with in the league? Uh, in terms of training, uh, it's become not just Ngara. It's become difficult for everyone, to be honest. Um, a lot of uh, these days in Nairobi, people are working Monday to Saturday. And when they leave their places of work at 5 p.m., they'll probably not be able to get to, to their <laughs> training venues, as opposed to the other days where there wasn't a lot of traffic as there is now. And so getting to those venues it, it, it isn't easy. It was easy in the older days because there wasn't so much traffic. You could move around pretty quickly. But if someone is working far away in Mombasa Road or somewhere in industrial area to be able to maneuver to get to the ground, they probably get mm. very little spending time. Um, it might come to an era where in future you might need floodlights to be able to have people train maybe beginning 7 p.m. or 6.30 to about 8 p.m. to be able to train under lights or train in an indoor facility. Um, as you say, uh, probably the teams are doing more of uh, a weekend training on a Saturday afternoon to prepare for a game on Sunday or friends on Saturday afternoon to prepare a game for Sunday. It might not be enough. You need to work out partnerships. You need to work out who's bowlers ball, bowling in pairs. So the whole team setup um, would have benefited, as Lamek said, if the teams train together. But um, at the moment, that's not achievable until maybe a, a, an investment of some magnitude comes across uh, that will be able to help the players to, uh, with this, because a lot of these players are not, if you look at the Ngara side, are not just professional cricketers or people who play cricket for a living. They work in companies and they only play cricket um, at, the, at the weekends uh, when time is available for them. So uh, as opposed to some teams like, for, for example, Stray Lounge, who probably have one or two players whose lives revolve around cricket. Uh, the ones at Gara, really, if you look at them, they're all people who are working. And so cricket, uh, they have to share that time with, with cricket as well. So uh, that training that Lamek called for could be good, but um, it's not yet achievable with the players in Gara at the moment. Uh, straight to Kachileva. 
they lost to Canbis by 224 runs. Obviously, Canbis were too good, but could Kachileva have done better or that is the best they could produce? I uh, thought of the day it was all written you know, as uh, can be. I know Rakep had spoken within the week and he was talking about respect for Kachileva. And, uh, mm -hmm. But I think Canvis just went about their business uh, over just looking at Kachileva. They went with their game plan, imposed their game plan on Kachileva, and Kachileva had no answers. Um, I don't think Kachileva would have done better on the day. Um, looking at that Candy's lineup, I spoke highly of it last week. I still speak highly of it today because I think they've got strength in depth. Um, if you look at even the number of kept is batting at, uh, that's that's a luxury. If he's coming in at six, coming in at seven, that's a luxury for, for any team. We know, all know what kind of a batsman he is, what resources he's got in himself. Range of shots, uh, he can go big. Uh, he can be very circumspect as well. He read the game, decide when to to go big and decide when to not to. Um, so you look at that. You look at the setup. The rain will go up the order with one of those youngsters and go after the bowling. And um, by and large, he would succeed, especially in this league. Uh, many a times, he'd be able to get off to a flyer. And that's the setup they need. They've got Nelson in between there. They've got Boone who's coming in, who's coming from, joining them from Sobibapa. And that's also another player who's key in their side. Uh, so you look at that, they've got Rajesh Budia who's bowling, who's the top bowler for the last couple of seasons in, in the league. You wonder whether he should he serve the call up uh, to the national side as well. Um, so those are key players, and I don't think like for like, um, if Kachileva would have matched them. Uh, I know Kachileva is breeding some youngsters. I like quite like Sumita Lai. Uh, mm -hmm. I think he's playing a key role. He's bowling well and getting runs in the side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, collectively, as a unit, they're still they're still lacking. Despite the fact that they did surprise uh, uh, Saali the, on the opening weekend. Uh, it was still also a close game. Uh, candidates were not going to allow anything of that sort in regards to the fact that they are defending champions. Uh, they look to be up the table from the past. They need to lay a marker on the league. And so I thought they would go about their business clinically and be able to put aside this Kachileva side. Uh, what, what is it that Candice are doing that Jim Kana are not doing? Because Jim Kana seem to want to push the youngsters, but they're not delivering. Uh, is there a point in the future whereby they will, or what do you think? Because Rakep is batting at seven and Candice is still winning matches. Jim Kana wants their national team players to bat down the order, but they are not winning matches. I know Candice promote most of their players from their development sides, and they've been building them for a while. But where does it go wrong for Jim Kana where it's working for Candice? Um, the setup is a bit different. I mean, the demand for, from at, at uh, Candice is, is quite huge. Um, when you go into that squad, it, it, they have a winning mentality. You are almost forced to go and perform. Um, yeah. The crowd, they've got a bit of crowd sometimes under them, and mm -hmm. they do give the players a bit of stake as well. And in terms of going forward, and so a number of times when that player, they need you to be able to be good enough to be able to replace uh, a player within the squad or to earn that opportunity. That's why they've got, you can see they've got a lot of teams, they've got, they've got, got about 60 players that they can work with. Uh, you see they have Candice Super League, they love Division 1, they had even a C team and they had a development team. So they had yeah. like nearly 60 players that would, they, they could work with. And um, in terms of that, you, you wouldn't compare like for like with a Gymkhana side that hasn't got so much pressure <laughs> from the youngsters. And a lot of those Gymkhana youngsters are coming from Starfield Academy, if you look at them. And basically coming from the academy uh, is, is, is a little different because the sort of pressure that will be applied on them, they're sort of being nurtured through and given opportunities to excel 
Um, and they did well against Ngara. If you looked at also the, the kind of fielding they threw themselves around in the field, they, they tried to do well, but there's still a gap in terms of what, after them, after if they do well, the rest of the guys need to back them up. If you look at the batting order for Jim Kana, and you're talking about them having their national team players batting lower down the order, that's a discussion we've had, and I've been thinking, maybe Lucas needs to emulate what Shem has done at Shellans. He went up, I think, at five, it's called a century from that position. Um, he's primarily, Shem Gochi is primarily a baller as well, the bowling all rounder. Lucas is also a bowling all rounder, does get a few with the bats, so he just needs to take his time, uh, get in there early, uh, read the conditions. Uh, and you sh should be able to get the runs that are required. It is key that the players that are the players in the team lead by example. If you take the example of Candice, usually they send those youngsters. If those youngsters fail, you've got Ramesh Mepani, you've got Vinod Ravadia, you've got Rake Patel, you've got Rajesh Budia, and you've got Viren Gondaria and Sachin Budia time to be able to perform to ensure that the failure of the answers, if there is at any time, is not felt by the entire team. So every time they'll go out there, they might go their gang who style, they give their players encouragement to go on there and tell them they are better than the rest. So they go out there knowing they are better. They try to prove they are better. In case they fail, they've got people to back them up in terms of they've got Vinod, they've got Rajesh Budia, and they've got um, Narendra Patel at times as well, and Ramesh Mepani, to be able to repair any damage that could have been caused by the opposition. But if they go with their, their style and it succeeds, then you'll see people like Rakepa just, just relax at the back of the innings, being able to get a few 10 or 20 to, to win a game or just uh, finish the innings. Yeah, but can this read their matches? Because you, you may find that when they come to face teams like Swami Bapa, you'll find racket batting at maybe three or four sometimes. Jim Kana don't have that luxury. And if Lucas is batting at seven against Kachileva, batting at five against Gara, when is he going to come up the order? He's not going to do that against Swami Bapa if he hasn't done that before. Like you've played a match or two and seen that it's not working for you. If you don't change then when there's no pressure to perform in the league, are you going to do it much later on when you've already resigned to the wooden spoon? Uh, I think it's a matter of someone putting their hand up and saying, I'm going out there, here I am, I'm going out there and I'm going to try and perform for the team rather than yeah. wait for the opportunity to bring yourself. So put your hand up and go out there. I think yeah. it's a matter of let's take the bull by its own. I'm going out there, <laughs> I'm putting my hand up and I'm going to try and do it for my club rather than just putting in a shift. If it's a matter of putting in a shift, we've got lots of players in this league who can put a shift. A shift, even I could walk in and put a shift. Go there, get 20, um, maybe get one minute or two. <laughs> that, that's that's <laughs> something that you need to make it better to show the, show the youngsters the way to do it. I'm a national team player. I'm better and I want to prove that I'm better than than the rest of these guys. I want to be an example so that the answers that even we are breeding are looking up to me. You look at that example, you look at the example at Canvas, the young, the team, the members of the national team or those who played in the national team at Canvas will give so much that anytime you, you, they come up against these teams, they perform and lay a marker for the answers. The answers will see this is the level, this is the standard we need to get to they'll keep fighting very hard to try and get to that level. Um, so I think it's upon uh, Lucas and other members of Jim Kano who are in the national team or aspiring to be in the national team to lead by example. And then the youngsters will follow suit. Remember, what they do will influence um, the youngsters. If they, the players are just putting in a shift, the youngsters will also be comfortable putting in a shift. But if they are now being pushed or the top players are telling them we are better and we can do this, then they'll also now follow suit in terms of uh, getting, taking the opportunity and being able to shine uh, for their teams. 
Uh, could it be a lack of interest? Uh, I know we played, the senior men's team played their last international assignment in 2019. They may not play again until next year. Is there, uh, has their interest waned to join the national team? Has the pressure reduced that you find players are not really putting their best foot forward? Because uh, I'm thinking if we have to come up with a team in about six months, we are really going to base it on the NPCA league. If you are going further to play the 40 overs and the 20 overs, there's nowhere else where we are going to gauge the players and see where well, we are going to pick this and this and this to join the national team. Have they forgotten what it takes to get there because they've been away from the action for so long? Okay, good evening, uh, uh, David. Sorry, good evening, Beryl. Uh, I'm having trouble with my uh, uh, light and, uh, and Wi-Fi, but I've just come in. Uh, it's Welcome. interesting uh, it's about Jim Kana. I was there on Sunday. Uh, the issue with Lucas uh, is not lack of interest. He's just, he doesn't even trust himself. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. in real sense, he's a better player than what he has offered for the <laughs> national team, leave alone uh, uh, the club. Because it's, uh, it's 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 rare to have a left hand quick. It's very rare. Very, very. And, uh, a left hand quick who trusts himself and who's got uh, a kind of pace that Lucas has is a very dangerous player. But I think Lucas really doesn't trust himself because uh, Sunday I saw him uh, leaving him is over. You see, they they they, they, had, they had scored two hundred and seventeen. Yeah. But he came in, he got uh, five overs. He's on form. He had already got in three wickets. He's already on tail. Then he stops bowling. And then uh, when he came back to bowl, he had to wait for Kavi, who was the captain, to call him back. And uh, in that team, Lucas should be somebody who just calls for the ball. In fact, he should, he should, he should bowl whenever he wants. He should bowl whenever he feels that there's need for him to bowl. So even uh, with the batting, they don't, they don't need to, 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 to ask Lucas to bat. Lucas can just tell somebody, okay, wait, I'm going. I don't think anybody in that lineup can tell Lucas, no, don't go, I'm going before you. He, he should pad up and go. Yeah, because I agree. Now, because now what is happening is that, like what happened to Dominic. And if, I think it's because I gave him a, a few stick in the morning. He batted mm -hmm. very well, it's got a 50. He batted yeah. very well. But you see, if you have a team that has got Dominic and, 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 and also you are forgetting even, uh, uh, what do you call brother, what is calling? Martin. Is Martin, okay. Martin. Martin is also a rounder and he's batting yeah. at nine. Yeah. Yeah, but but the, the team the team the way it is uh, uh I saw Ash Ash betting very well he got fifty. The yeah. team the way it is it has got uh, guys who don't want to uh, put the hand up and win the game. I think they're turning up because they're, they're turning up because uh, they work for Starfield and Starfield is connected to Jim Kana. And uh, as I said last week, they have to get away to disconnect Starfield from Jim Kana. They have to be very sure that when they are playing for Jim Kana, it's a different ball game. They are so comfortable because uh, they work for Starfield and they feel they're just obliged to play for Jim Kana on Sunday. And they're not really uh, trying to make uh, Jim Kana great because they're just playing for Jim Kana because they're using that ground. I think they have, they have to change that. Uh, in, in terms of uh, pl playing for Kenya, as, as it is, uh, Lucas doesn't have a real competition. So we need to build people like Gerald, uh, who is a very good uh, opening bowler. Bola, we need yeah. to get these guys, yeah, we need to get these guys uh, thinking that they can be replaced because at the moment they're just uh, sitting there thinking that. Uh, the, the, the last team that we picked will be picked. That's why you see people like uh, Collins is not playing the league and they're not worried. They know that they'll be picked. We need to get uh, the upcoming players like Sachin 
who's uh, who's taking his game serious. We need to show them that we can pick another uh, set of players because uh, the worst thing as a national team player, and it also happened to us when we were playing, is uh, being reluctant and uh, telling yourself that there's nobody else. Then you, then, then you get reluctant, then you don't worry about your Sunday performance, then you don't worry even if you don't score on Sunday or you don't bat. Then it, it, it gets to you because when you play with that attitude, you can't switch on when you're playing for the national team. It doesn't yeah. really happen. In, it's, not a, it's not a light bulb. It's not a light bulb. They have to, the seriousness has to start from uh, the league. Because I, I don't know where uh, Shem got serious. He, he, was, he was doing the same last year with Congonis. He was just standing up. Maybe, maybe he's got a performance contract this time. So <laughs> exactly. He's, he's getting serious. No, maybe, maybe. But, but I think all our national team players are never serious. So that's why you, you find that even in their national team training, uh, when it was coached there, you have to call them. They get late. Even on Sundays, just if, you, if you're on the ground and uh, David is going back to Empire this week, after being laid off, when when you when you when the empire gets into the ground before a national team player, he, he's been he's been empowering this league. He knows the guys who are left, the guys who have to wait for after getting the list, are, are national team players, and then they they know that they warm up for one hour in the national team, but they don't warm up uh, playing uh, the league, the league. And, and and the muscle doesn't feel different. You still you are still bowling. Yeah. You're still betting, you're still sprinting. Yeah. So they don't take the league serious. Mm -hmm. So the issue of Jim Kana is them not taking it serious. They, they scored 213. They started to 17. They, mm -hmm. they, they're not taking it serious. They thought they already won. That's how Sarali came back. So I think uh, Lucas doesn't need anybody to tell him. To but up the order or anybody to tell him to evolve very well. I, I agree, but he, he, why was he leaving his office? Because in, they needed wickets. Yeah. And nobody else could take wickets. Yeah. So he kept his overs for late. I was asking, uh, Matt, why are you keeping your overs for what? Until you are bowling the last overs. You're bowling in the last overs when it's too late. Yeah. You need to get wickets. In this league, you get. In this league, what made Sobibapa win is uh, James got wickets. There was no issue of leaving uh, James late for, for, for you to finish your 50 overs. So what they did, they calculated uh, who are going to finish the 50 overs. Mm -hmm. So they brought, them, they brought uh, people to buy overs. They, they mm -hmm. brought uh, even hard to ball. You, you don't buy overs in this league. Your top over, over, over bowlers clear the opposition because yeah. every team has got only five batsmen. Five maximum. You clear the five in the tail. Mm -hmm. So why should you keep why should you keep your overs? Because now they are they are two down. Are they, are they are two down and they are very good yeah. teams. And uh, yeah. even, even uh uh, even I had, I had the notion of uh, academy when I put uh, David is saying, but mm -hmm. what, just check the lineup. Yeah, you have Kavi. He scored a, a cameo twenty. Very good. Uh, a very good start, by the way. You yeah. have uh, Abdul Majmi, seasoned mm -hmm. campaigner. You have Bir, seasoned yeah. campaigner. You have uh, Ash. Mm -hmm. In this league, Ash is a very good player. You have Dominic who came in at five. You have mm -hmm. uh, who came in as I can't remember. This guy who was playing for he was playing for Boya, uh, the pony boy. What is his name? Shay. Shay. Yeah. Shay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you have those kind of best men in the league, uh, yeah, how do you lose? They have to they That's have to separate them from the academy. Thanks, That's an Peter. Point, Peter. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I also record in terms of um, you know, Betty spoke about the national team. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just coming out up maybe in a few 
It's actually they're supposed to have fixtures towards the end of this year. They're trying yeah. to bunch together towards the end. And uh, so they could be having a fixture in September. They could be having a fixture in November as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So for me, in terms of whether I'm analyzing Lucas or any other player for, this, for that matter in that Gymkana side or the national team per se, I think it's professionality. Um, mm -hmm. If you're a professional in whatever you're doing, you do things um, in a certain way, in a certain manner, in a certain order. I'm an umpire. At the moment, I haven't been on the field. But if I come up to the field, there's expectations are there that I should be able to do as well. So the fact that there's a bit of a stalemate and a minute and they are not on the field doesn't make me just sleep around. I'll still read whatever I need to read. I'll still get myself up to there to just discuss uh, between myself, colleagues, and whatever. we'll talk about cricket, talk about umpiring, talk about decisions, uh, watch games, uh, try to learn one or two things every time it's a learning process. So as a professional player, you get that in yourself. So you act professionally. So as Peter is saying, some of them do get late for matches. Um, it's, it's important that, that that discipline, it's what will make you do well at the next level. It's what will also make you do well here. The discipline, the warming up, those muscles, the game, the respect of each fixture, it's important. It's still a cricket match. Even if it's a Saturday afternoon one, if it's a Sunday one, it's a big game. If you, do, if you can't do it against Saudi, you might be able to struggle to do it against the, the title contenders as well. So it's mm -hmm. a matter of somebody else taking it professionally. Even if he's saying about maybe someone works for stuff in and probably happy that they probably yeah. still play for Gymkhana, just a matter of turning up. I think if someone is more professional, whatever they're doing, and Peter has mentioned quite good batsmen in that team as well, and I do agree with him. Uh, they, they need as individuals to, to do well uh, for the team. I mean, Ash came in after a week's absence and mm -hmm. he able to perform. He was away. Unfortunately, Karen wasn't there. But besides that, they still had some good batsmen in that team that against yeah. an opposition like the Saali one, with all due respect, they could also um, try and get a win on that one. Okay, um, on to the last match of the day, Swami Bapa versus Raraka. Uh, Bamba, you called it correctly. <laughs> Swami won by 99 <laughs> runs. So for Raraka, they managed to get the services of the three Ugandans, the opening batsman, Zefania Rinaitwe. He got 22 runs at the top. Uh, they got the national team captain, Brian Masaba, who's an all-rounder, and they got Kenneth Waiswa, who's mostly a bowler, but he can bat a little bit. So they, they managed to make a difference of 10 runs from what they had last week. And uh, my observation is that these experiments, when they work, they look really good, but when they don't, it looks really bad. Are Ruaraka getting out of this hole anytime soon? Because the three are still there. Their lockdown ends on July 31st, so they may still play two or three matches. Are they getting Ruaraka yeah. out of this hole? You see, you see what, what, you, what you don't know, and, uh, I think Pamba will agree with me. Mm. Ugandans have got a problem with skin. Yes. And that's how, uh, that's how Sonny Papa got them, because they, 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 they came in when uh, James unfortunately was on form. Yeah. And uh, we had Malidi on the other side. Ugandans yeah. uh, feel comfortable playing spin maybe when they, they get their eye in. But you see, they came in and they found spin. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, the undoing. And I, I, I think I said uh, Sonny Papa has got a slim uh, lineup this time. So yeah. whoever is there now knows that. They cannot, uh, they cannot uh, wait for anybody else. They cannot wait for the next batsman because they lost uh, Alex and they lost Karim who are top order uh, batters. And you, you saw what happened when uh, like Neymar came in late and came 60. Yeah. I think uh, uh, Sonny Papa is more dangerous now with the lean uh, lineup than uh, when they had uh, looking at the next guy to, to do it. Now they don't look at the next guy to do it. So Roraka, unfortunately, with their pros, uh, they got spin. Uh, we have seen uh, Ugandans 
struggled in skill every now and then. And, uh, and, and, and the wickets are a bit slow now because they, they, they undercover. People are, are, are trying to cover them not to get trained on. They are slow, they are turning. So I think the spin did them. If, if, if they got a team that uh, is dominant with uh, best bowlers or medium pacers, the Ugandans, because they've been training and uh, you see the, they've been uh, playing, they went to Namibia, they've been preparing. Uh, in fact, uh, Corona just slowed them down, but they have got better preparation than uh, the rest of uh, the rest of us. They went and to they Asia as well. Them. Yeah, yeah, and they brought three of them. So just imagine they brought three from Uganda, but Spin did them because uh, everybody in Raka uh, just set aside, knowing that they have got three pros who can bat. But spin, I think spin did them because if you if you see what uh, uh, James was bowling on Sunday, anybody yeah. would have struggled because he was doing he was, he was turning the ball and he was hitting the right area. Yeah, but the so question is, Raka, unfortunately, unfortunately, the pros came when the spin was turning, but <laughs> it's a very good line. It's a very good line. So the next game, I think, they'll they'll, they'll surprise somebody. Uh, okay. but, uh, I may I may beg to differ. <laughs> um, <laughs> with Raraka, well, I haven't got the luxury of looking at uh, at at the at the fixture and length, so we probably could probably preview that one going forward. But yeah. in terms of that lineup. I, I really, they got bogged down by spin and Malindi, you look at the economy rate, bowling 10 overs, 5 made and 15 for 2 Imagine. weeks at the same time. Shem Gote, sorry, James Gote, James. Was five, 7 overs, 1 made and 13 for 5. Run. Yeah. Imagine. You look at that, the average for, the economy rate for Malindi was 1.5, the economy for James was 1.6 and you're looking mm -hmm. at that and you're wondering, wow, what yeah, are you happening? Spin. They so, can't play spin. Uh, but those are just three individuals. Well, Zephyr the it was up the order and got out to a to a steamer, Peter Koech. But yeah. for me, the struggle is the in terms of the Roraka lineup, is the thinness in terms of experience in batting. I know they've got people who've been in the league for a while, but you look at Chandra Shirani, the wicket keeper batsman. It's mm -hmm. been in the league for a while. It should be able to be good value for a 20, 30, maybe up there over if and every time. Keval Bova yeah. is a kid. And he's, he's someone who has been promoted to, from B a couple of years back. And, and if you look at that from there, it's Purushotam, Bekaria. Puso can get a few runs there, here and there. But again, on this day, he didn't click. Um, he got bowled by James. And then... Behind that, you lo really looking to look for bus menu struggling. Elijah is batting at 11. It doesn't get you much runs. A sheet of a carry as a home under 19 doesn't get you the batting at 10. So you look mm -hmm. at down the order there. There are also a group of candidates who might need to find somebody to come up the order. I think a sheet of a carrier, the under 19 youngster. He can, he's, he's actually an all-rounder. When, when he was picked to go to Namibia, he was an all-rounder. He was, he was more of a, 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 batting all, sorry, a bowling all-rounder, but he could probably promote himself or probably the team can look within themselves and get him up there to, to also maybe somewhere like number seven or six there to try and give himself time to score, to score a few runs because he can get those ones if he can stay patient. And I hope the Ugandans, they be, they've come under fire because they came in. They haven't gelled. They hadn't found. They hadn't had enough, enough time to to play around uh, the weekends or train with the team together. So it's something that they can probably look to work upon. Get uh, a few uh, training sessions under their belts. Uh, get the teams, uh, the team set up. Uh, get to learn the players as well who they are playing against, and then the surfaces. So they on this one we've probably uh, been a little tough on them, but they, they they are needed to hit the ground running because they came into a team to rescue a team that is actually was struggling. You said they made an yeah. improvement of ten runs um, yes. from ninety four to one fourteen. Yeah, uh, it doesn't look like that on paper. It, it's not great. It's not one that <laughs> someone can look at and say I'm calling it. 
it looks so bad. <laughs> but I don't understand. Yeah. The improvement now is being on home ground. And you see, they played against the team. They played against a team that people were worried because they have lost uh, the players. Four players. Uh, they yeah. lost uh, three, three, three top players because they have lost uh, Bundy and they've lost uh, Alex, Alex and they've lost Karim. Yeah. And Lamek. Yeah, uh, and, and Lamek also, who the experienced player. So, see, that, that, that's, that's five players. Naman, Patel. And... Yeah, so oh, yeah, Naman relocated. Five, five, yeah. Five, yeah, yeah, so five of them. Well. <laughs> and even when we, you, when we were talking last week, we said uh, some Bapa would struggle. But if, yeah. if, if Raka is struggling against some Bapa, I think uh, <laughs> they'll struggle throughout the league. But I'm telling you that the, the three Vernon players are dangerous players. So yeah. like if, if, if they get going, they, they'll get going. So anybody who will take them cheaply will be in trouble. But I yeah. also want to say that Swami Baba, the only weakest link they have is uh, Maurice Ouma, who has to wake up. If he wakes up, then Swami Baba uh, has got no issue. They'll, 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 do the, they'll do well in the league. But uh, if we let them down, because he has to anchor now the the betting lineup, because uh, as it is now, is the most senior batsman in the top order. And uh, Swami Bapa, when 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 I was playing for Swami Bapa, we only needed uh, one batsman, which was which was Steve Ticolo. Mm -hmm. he, he used to score the runs. So if he picks it like that, and he, he thinks like that, and it just become the only batsman in the team, so people bats around him. So when he fails, the rest. Uh, will pick up. But when he gets in, he has to make sure he, he, get, he goes big, like what uh, Shem did in the first game, and he got 100. So if you get somebody who goes big and get 100 in this league, that means you're going to score, because people are, are, are still winning with 213, mm -hmm. 217. Yeah. So, and they know if somebody gets 100, then I'm, it's big. It's going to be up to 275, and the position is struggled. But they have to pick up because I know the borders will open. Yeah. Uh, Raka will get pros. Uh, Sahali will get more pros. The Lions, even if they're a strong team, they'll get more pros. Uh, Sahali, even in fact, got somebody from Pakistan this week. Mm. He's quick. Uh, yeah. The only issue is uh, he didn't know which length to bowl. He bowled short at Jim Kana, and the ball was just. You see, Jim Kana, if he bowled short in the morning, that's yeah. a tennis bounce. Yeah. The tennis bounce. So mm -hmm. if he if he knew length, if he knew length this week, he could have uh, got Jim Cannon into trouble very early. Mm -hmm. But he didn't know which length to bowl. But he's a very little bowler, and again he scored forty nine, which means he's a he's not a, a real all rounder. But you see, as a pro, he knows what he's doing. So he got mm -hmm. uh, got forty nine uh, and got out on forty nine. But is going to trouble people and he understands the land. So before people get pros, I think some of us to really make sure that uh, they they get their house in order. And I've, I've picked up uh, Morse Uma because he's let them down for a long time. He has to pick up, he's a senior pro now. The, the rest of the guys are like uh, Rush. Rush is a very good player, but he doesn't reflect in his scorecard. So you yeah. have to make sure that this time, this time the scorecard is different. Yeah. And then Maya, uh, people people call people people call players in Kenya all rounders. Nehemiah is one of the genuine all rounders. Leave alone these people. David uh, is saying he, he was all rounder under 19. Those are guys who have never scored anything. They just call all rounders uh, on paper. But Nehemiah is a real all rounder, and uh, when he gets going, uh, I think he can really. Uh, cause damage like like you saw what he did this Sunday. He scored 59 and still got wickets. So those guys have to make sure that because some weapons are thin and they're experienced, they have to take the bull by the horn and make sure they steer some Bapa to a win. And I know if uh, it opens up, they'll still get one or two pros because I don't yeah. think they'll let it go like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they get one or two pros. So I think this league will be uh, a different league from what we have seen. There's a lot of contests. 
Fali has got the belief that they, they want to win it because last year they were top there in the tournament. Canvis has got a very relaxed team. You see, Canvis doesn't worry about what is happening tomorrow. They've got a very relaxed team. They win because they're relaxed. You can see them in the morning. They win because they're relaxed and they don't rely. They scored uh, 350 and nobody scored 100. Yeah. That's how relaxed they are. Because if you score 350, somebody has to go big. Yeah. But they score 350. I think the top guy was 78. 78, yeah. Yeah, you see, so if, if you have a team where you're scoring 350 without a century, it tells you how balanced uh, they are. Mm -hmm. So, and, I, and I, as I said, because reliance will bring pros, they will not let it go. Roraka will do the same. So Ali thinks they can win it, so they'll, they'll bring two more pros. The yeah. only team that is struggling, and I don't know what they want to do with the league is Simba. I don't know if they want to play or not, or they want to rebuild. But the rest of the guys will uh, strengthen their teams. So I think uh, if the Sony Papa doesn't pick up and they don't play the way they have to play, they'll be in trouble. Final thoughts, Pamba? Um, we've spoken about professional strength and strength of this team, the teams, that is a good thing. Uh, uh, but also locally, um, if we could also work to produce more, I know uh, we're probably struggling at some club levels, but uh, I'd, I'd be wishing for a situation where uh, those professionals, when they come in, we can at least get to learn from them, get to pick a thing or two to be able to help our youngsters so that they can go forward in terms of also building their strengths so that uh, as, as, as we go in the future, we need less and less pros and yeah. we also have uh, our locals uh, making the headlines more uh, to be able to, to get those tips. It's, it's as if at the moment we are, we are, we are a bit limited in terms of uh, ability-wise, in terms of the number of teams we have for them to compete uh, well, they probably might need um, pros. It's a good thing to also have pros, but also I hope uh, those pros being here, not just to play to win on Sunday, to be used, utilized to assist the youngsters during the week so that uh, yeah. even the regular players in the team to be learn a thing or two from them so that uh, they can also make that opportunity to work uh, and, and get better at, at playing in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pamba. Thank you, Peter, even though you came late. Uh, it's been a good discussion. Yeah, it's okay. I'll see you on Friday as we review the matches for next week. We have the ladies' league. Yes, on Saturday. Last week it was because um, uh, the guys of East African Nenea uh, had a meeting, so they couldn't yeah, do it. So that, yeah. But, uh, yeah. This week, yeah, so they have to take. Uh, they have to take their uniform tomorrow. Yeah. So that they're playing on Saturday. Okay. So and, so. and I, I know I know this I know this Sunday the Empires will be back, so we might see some yeah. the in the pitch. Because I don't know I don't know how it went. I didn't attend it, but uh, we need them back because uh, the kind of uh, competition that is going to because this league is going to be very tough. Yeah. And yeah. so we need uh, we need uh, we need the guys who are we, we had empires uh, uh makeshift, but I, I can tell you some of them empired better than the guys I see on Sunday. I will name 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 names, but I, I think uh the, the thing is uh some of our national ladies team players realize that they play the league, they play national 